Miniature Market has thousands of board games at discounted prices. Click the direct link below to see all of those discounted games. Hello my friends, today we're going back to 1977 where we're going to be making some hard rock music. We're going to be trying to make demo tapes and practice and getting record deals and renegotiating that record deals and trying to play smaller gigs to bigger gigs to huge stadiums. Today we're taking a look at Rock Hard 1977. Uh, this is a Euro-style game published by Devere. Let me show you how it's played. I'll see you on the other side. In Rock Hard, you're going to get to be one of these interesting looking characters. All of them are going to come with their own special ability and their own large board that you're going to be managing. And so that character of yours is going to go inside the amplifier here, which is actually going to track most of your base stats. And this is such a cool part of the game is like you literally have amplifier knobs here and you're gonna be managing your three main stats chops reputation songs here you're gonna be tracking royalties and getting money over the course of the game and then your sugar your sugar cravings as well money in the game is paper money but it actually looks really cool now you're gonna start off with two secret personal goals i have them face up but they're secret here you at the end of the game you want to have more songs then chops those are the two of the base stats if so you'll get six points at the end here you want to have no candy you start with candy you're going to be using this to be able to take extra actions so essentially if you have none at the end of the game well you'll have you'll get three points you'll also get to select from two different jobs at the beginning of the game we're a veterinary assistant so at night we're going to be able to work and get two dollars we also have a manager here it gives you a special ability like hey during the day action costs uh one less so during the day you can spend money and that the manager kind of helps you out with the money there the game is played over nine rounds, being nine months, and you try to have the most points at the end. At the beginning of each round, there's going to be a new event. Sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad, like in this one. All hangout spots are unavailable. Sometimes it blocks spots. Sometimes it makes things a little cheaper. Sometimes you just get money. Sometimes it's really bad, and so you never know what you're going to get, but it does throw a monkey wrench in all of your plans, and this is a tight, an economically tight game, so it can affect the turns quite a bit, I find. One of the ways to get points are three public goals, like be the first person to quit your job, uh, and if so, you'll get you know five points, and you'll get certain points if you come in second or third or things like that. Performance bonus, finish the game with the most songs, so having the highest stat on songs. Or publicity bonus, have at least one card from all five hangout spots. And these are different types of icons that you'll be doing set collection for. And of course, these are cards, so these are different each game. Now the game is worker placement, so you're going to go in turn order, which are cool looking uh, guitar picks. And there's three different parts. You have, you know, day, night, and after hours. So during the day phase, players are going to be placing worker placement here, night phase here, uh, hangout phase here. But there's always any time spaces that you can go to on any of the phases. And so each round, you're going to go through all three of those phases. And you're going to do so by placing like worker placement. They have some nice acrylic uh, characters here. So if I go here for an interview, I'm going to get one reputation. But like most worker placement games, most spots are blocked when somebody else goes there. Now, of course, these anytime spots, these are the ones you kind of go to when everything's blocked you want to go to, and all these spots are pretty much open for as many people that want to go there, like donating blood and getting a dollar, or spending a dollar, or, or, or getting a dollar for buying or selling candy. So you're going to place here once, and once everyone's placed here, you'll then do it again in the nighttime, and then again in the after hours phase, and that'll be around. So you're going to be doing different things, like gaining reputation, or going to rehearsal studios, paying a dollar to rent out the studio and getting better chops. You're going to hire an indie promotion to, uh, you know, spend three dollars to get reputation and points, which is fame, or spend two dollars to get two reputation and fame. But to get these, to be able to do this, you have to have sort of a, a record or a demo tape, uh, you know, ready for them to, to to play. Now we'll talk about how you get these later. Maybe you hire a publicist, just get a dollar. You pay a dollar to get a reputation and fame. You'd be hiring crew because over the course of the game. And like in the next phase, you might be able to play gigs. And the bigger the gigs, the more I need here either four. Uh, chops or five reputation, three songs, and one crew. So to hire your first crew, if you were the first person here, if I went here, it would cost me a dollar to get my first crew. If, if somebody was already here, then the next person has to pay two dollars. If p these two spots are full, then it's three dollars. It gets more and more expensive. And the second and th third crew members are going to cost you more money, money as well, but that helps you play at larger spots like this stadium down here. Now, this is a cool aspect. If you go here, if you have a demo tape or a record deal and you have all these things, you don't spend them, you just need to have them, like three chops, three reputation, three songs, you can gain royalty. And this is going to allow you to move up on your royalty track, which if I did the first one there, I would get at the end of every round, I'm going to get $2. That's like income because it's your royalty, very thematic. If I'd gotten to the second level one there, then you're going to get $3 in a point or $5 in two points if you move your royalty up all the way. Again, sort of like an engine building of money and points there. Now we talked about candy. Candy is important because you can spend it to take an additional action or at least attempt to. So what you do is you basically spend that, you get the sugar rush card, most of them, 
say, hey, increase your craving by one, roll for blood sugar, and you get a bonus action. So you increase this, you roll this, and as long as you get a one or higher, you get to do it. But let's say next time, next two times I do it, I get the three, and let's say I rolled a two. I did not do this. So in fact, what happens is uh, you're low, you get low sugar, and essentially you're gonna not be able to take a day action the next round. So it's sort of a pressure luck, uh, but then this does drop down a little bit to help you out next time. All right, there are some cards that increase your uh, craving by two and some of them that say you can't even roll. So basically you wasted your candy for nothing, which is a little frustrating. All these cards get shuffled back in every round. During the night, the night phase, you're gonna be going and playing gigs. Like if you have three chops or three reputation, you go to these spots and get reputation and fame or chops and fame. Every round there's a random gig that you can go to and then we'll do different things. And these get better and better as the game goes on. Like in the A phase, first three rounds, you go here, you go to a, a bar mitzvah. You get money, but you lose reputation because, hey, who wants to play at a bar mitzvah, right? It's not like a big, glorious thing. So thematically makes sense. Uh, you know, workers, two workers, five songs, things like that. But they're going to get you a lot of things. So they're going to get, you know, money, uh, chops or reputation and points. Uh, and of course, you can go to this one, just get six points. So you go to this one and get $2, two, you know, two of these or five points. So you get to select. But again, these are going to get blocked up towards the end of the game. And hopefully towards the end of the game, you might be able to play the huge stadium. So you have to have at least 19 of combination of chops and reputation, eight songs, three crew, and a record deal. And then you can play this huge stadium. We get just 10 points, huge, or you get eight points and some other things there as well. Now you'll notice some of these spots have this, and this basically means you can't gig more than once per round, meaning you can't use the candy to gig twice, for example. And there's some spots that have these types of things. Now we talked about the record deal. One of the spots at, at the, the after hours is you record a demo. So you go here, you spend $3, you get a tape. Now one of the cool things is when you do get it, you actually get a tape. And then later on, when, uh, I showed you a spot where you, you, you get a record deal or renegotiate your record deal. Uh, when you do so you turn in the tape and you actually end up getting a record which is kind of cool good components there here going to bed early is pretty important because you go here and this is going to be turn order for next round because at the end of the round you look at who's at the spot the lower number goes first and these spots always get randomized each round these tokens are randomized so that you know turn order will change depending on what you go to now these are hangouts these are different spots you can go to now each of these decks have some different things that they can do uh, and then like if you get on this thing you have a choice to make uh, so it's a back, you go backstage and you find some money in a scrap and the lyrics in the, bath, in, the, in the bathroom. You can search for whoever lost them or keep them. If you keep them, you gain a dollar and, and the song. Uh, if, if, if not, if you do the other one, you get one reputation. Now these are, again, icons, which might actually help you with end game goals like this one, have at least one from all the spots. And you actually start with two of these randomly, two different ones. And anytime you have four of the same or four different, you get to turn in, well, you don't turn them in, you keep them, but you get five fame for it. So it's another set collection that you're trying to do throughout the game. If you're trying to get that last set, you can get a wild one. These don't give you any abilities, but they give you a wild one to help you get that fame uh, for the set collection. And at the end of the round, again, you're gonna reset turn order, you go to the next round. At the end of the third round, you have to pay your manager a dollar. And then this uh, September, three dollars at the end of the game, five dollars. If you can't, you spend, you, you lose three fame or points for each dollar you can't spend. It's not good, you need to be able to try to keep them. So at the end of this, uh, you're gonna, you have gotten points or fame throughout the game. You'll score for any public goals where you've placed your cubes that you've earned those. And then of course you have personal goals and whoever has the most is the winner. All right, first let me tell you what I like about the game. Let me also tell you about my biases coming into this. I am a musician. I have been on a, have been in a, a band as a saxophone player, a traveling band that won a national song contest many years ago uh, that put us in Spin Magazine. So I have been a touring musician before. Uh, and so I'm naturally inclined to like games that are about music and especially like things like this. So I'm a little more inclined to like this uh, because of that. So I wanted to put that out there. Uh, first of all, the thing I like about this game, probably the best, is the theming and the components. You can tell, now this game is designed by Jackie Fox, who was uh, a popular bass player, uh, and she has been successful in the music industry, and so this clearly was a passion project for her. This wasn't someone who designed the game and threw a theme together and pasted it on. This game is a very thematic Euro game, which is becoming more and more common these days, but generally speaking, Euro games tend to have a theme, but then it's eh, it's usually far-fetched and often pasted on parts. This game clearly was thought of with theme and mechanisms together. And the theming and components of this game is, in my opinion, brings this game up a full point, maybe even a point and a half here because of the way things work together. So theming of, you know, you've got the, and the components, you have the amplifiers and the knobs and you're moving up different things like, you know, like, uh, you know, chops and, and songs and things like that. It just looks really cool. It's fun moving those up. It's great that they go to 11 and not 10, just like hilarious, right? Um, you know, they use 
tapes. When you get the demo tapes, you get the tape, and then you upgrade to a record, you get a record. And you know, the components, the, the, the theming, and the theming is spread throughout everything you do in the game. I'll get more about that in a little, little, little bit there. Uh, I like that there's like, it's a worker placement game, but there's three different areas. You know, you've got daytime, you've got nighttime, you've got like after hours, right? And so as you're playing, everyone's placing like in the same general section. Or of course, there's like these anytime spots so you can kind of go to. Those are great to go to when you're sort of blocked. Uh, but I like that there's those, those three, different, three, three different aspects of the day that you're going through. I like that you're either using your job in a specific phase or not. So you get a job card and depending on the type of job you have, again, thematically, it tells you when is your opportunity to work. Uh, and then you can either work and get that or you can not work. But if you don't work, well, you get a not work token. If you don't work three times, you get fired or you quit your choice. And then you don't get that ability anymore. You're just a full-time musician. And so it's tough because sometimes you want to do something specific, but sometimes, you know, you want to work too. Working a lot of times is a great fallback when you're the spots you really want to go, go to are blocked and it gives you a, you know, a good little thing to do there as well. But again, you can't miss work too much or it's gone, right? So you get that, get that balance as well. Uh, I always like personal and public goals in games and uh, they work well here. Uh, you know, like maybe you have one that says, you know, give blood three times and you get, you know, points at the end. And it's great because there's a give blood sort of spot that you go to. Generally, when spaces are blocked, but you know, if good spaces are blocked, not only is that going to give you a dollar, but it's also going to help you for your end game goal. Those goals uh, is, is is definitely a big positive of this game because it outweighs some of the negatives that I'll get to uh, a little bit later. I like that you start with the manager uh, and you and your musician has special abilities. So that's going to sort of change your strategy up a little bit from game to game. Uh, and I like that you're trying to find the right time to use the extra candy action. So you've got the candy and you're like, oh man, I really need to do two of these things. I need to get this, this round, and then I can do this. If I could shortcut a whole round by using a candy and getting it and being able to roll for it, I can get this done in one round instead of waiting for two rounds. And I like the push your luck balance of trying to figure out, or, or I like the ability to do that. We'll get more about the push your luck aspect of that later that I didn't like as much. Um, the different hangouts. I like that when you go to those different hangouts, not only are you trying to do set collection, but you're also... Uh, you know, diff those different decks do different things. Some of them, some of them do like give you songs often. Some of them give you rubric, rubric breaking abilities. And even though you're trying to collect either all four, you know, four of the same or four different icons there, they're also going to give you different types of things. You don't know exactly what you're going to get, but at least you have an idea of what they might be. I like that. But when you think of the theme of this game, again, this is the best part of this game is, you know, you're going to the rec record studio and you're getting chops because you're practicing. You're going to after hours to record a demo tape. You're going to take that demo tape next round, you're going to, you know, try to negotiate a record deal, or you're going to pay someone to play your stuff on the radio and get some money and reputation. Um, you know, and you're going to different gigs and you're trying to get the bigger gigs and just everything is so thematic. And I don't often read flavor text in games, but the flavor text on all the cards in this game are just great. Even the events and the, 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 the temporary gigs and the, all the hangouts, like, they're just great. You know, after you've read it one time, will you read it again? Maybe. Will you read it more than twice? Probably not. But it's still, there's a lot of cards in the game. It'll be a while until you see all those. So, again, the thematic ties to this game is really the, the best part about this game. Uh, things that I didn't like as much. Uh, well, a very minor nitpick, setup time. There's a lot of little small decks that you got to separate out and shuffle and stuff like that and set them all up. The setup time can be a little bit a lot. Takedown time will help with that if you put all the decks together and stack them all nicely. Uh, setup isn't as bad. Uh, minor nitpick there. Uh, the upkeep, another minor nitpick is, you know, at the end of each round, you got to take all those the tokens that does turn order and shuffle them all up and put them back up. Also, sometimes it's it's sometimes easy to forget to take a non-work token when when you take it. Sometimes you'll even like just do an action, then you'll be like, oh crap, I was supposed to work during the day. I did this already. It's already been someone else's turn. Ah, crap, I guess I have to not work this turn. You take a not work token. Sometimes you just totally forget. You get to the end of the round, you're like, oh man, did I work this round? No? Oh, crap. So sometimes, eh, sometimes, okay, it can be a little fiddly here. Um, my biggest problem with the game is are the, the amount of randomness in this game. Now, first I want to say that I like randomness in games. Uh, I also like no luck strategy games. Those There are some Euro games that have no luck, but a lot of the no luck games are like abstract strategy games and there are plenty of those that I do like and I think they have their place. So generally speaking, I like a game that's balanced well between luck and strategy. The type of luck that's in this game is not the kind that I tend to like and I think it turns other people off as well from, from my experience. The randomized, there's a lot of randomness in this game. So the randomized negative events. I've never liked this way of inducing randomness in the game. Let's just put an event out there at the beginning of the round. 
Oh, wait, well, you get something good. Oh, this is a lot harder. Oh, you know that place that uh, you can't play Panda this round? You spent all last round, your entire plan was to get the exact right amount of chops, songs, workers, uh, crew, so that you're gonna be able to play Panda this round. Your whole plan for the last round and a half has been to do this so you can get fast in turn order, so you can be the first to get the best thing at play Panda this round. Guess what? Event comes up, haha, ha, you can't play Panda this round. You just lost like a round and a half of your planning. I hate this type of induced randomness in games that just beat you down for no reason. Doesn't make the game better. Sure, maybe you have to like, it's, it's, it's not fun and it doesn't feel well, but sometimes you just get stuff. And that didn't go over as well as either. Someone might have spent a round, maybe a round and a half, planning to be able to, okay, I, I did these things, I got this money, I can now go make my demo tapes, so that next round I can do this. Well, you spent a round and a half planning for that, doing that, so you, you can go do it, and then you know what, the random gig this month, oh, hey, it allows you just to get a shortcut. If you roll a five or six, you can get a record deal without having a tape. Wait a minute, I just spent a round and a half planning for that. So even things that sound positive can also be negative for others, and then sometimes it's just positive, hey, get some money this round, whatever. Say so, yeah, every spot's open this round. I don't like events like this in games, generally speaking. I don't think they work well here. I don't think they work well in, in pretty much any game. And uh, it really takes the experience down for me in this one. Uh, the randomness for rolling for candy. I don't understand another forced induced randomness that isn't needed. Like, okay, I get a card for the candy. I spend the candy. I, I get a card. And most of the time, I'm going to roll a die and then move my up. Early in the game, great. It's usually a little bit easier to be able to get extra action. Later in the game, eh, not so easy, and you're probably gonna bust and you know get the low sugar and turn off, and you don't get to do a day action next round. I, I, two of the cards, one of them, you don't get to do anything. Sugar, it's sugar free. You get nothing. You basically just wasted that candy. Other one, oh, you got to increase your thing by two, which makes it less likely that you're gonna be able to actually do it. Again, another thing, a piece of randomness that I don't think was necessary. Just saying, hey, if you get candy, you can spend it and you can get an extra action. I don't understand why you had to be like, oh, let's press your luck here, make it already more random to a game that has a lot of randomness that really hurts it. I don't get that aspect of it. Uh, the hangouts, uh, the hangouts themselves, in the rules it tells you what each hangout can give you, generally speaking, and it's really important actually, because if you're stuck trying to get a song, which one of these five decks are gonna give me a song? I don't know. You got to go back in the rulebook and look at it. Should have been listed with little icons, maybe, on the board, or a single player aid to put next to the board that tells you what those things do. That was a little minor pick. Um, and then the last thing is, you know, Stefan Stefan Feld's node for his like negative reinforcement, where like you have to do this, or Uwe Rosenberg with feed your people. Here, you've got to be able to pay your manager at the three times per game. You know, and the price gets worse and worse as you go through the game to keep your manager, which gives you a good uh, ability. But it's like, ah, uh, if I don't pay it, I've got to spend three points for every dollar I can't pay them. And it's like, uh, the game's already tight. You've already got all this crazy randomness throwing things in there that, that may really stump your, like, a third of your game's planning. And now I got to lose points because I can't pay this manager. It would have been enough to just say, hey, if you can't pay your manager, you'll lose them. You know, right? And not also lose points, but I don't know. Another thing that I didn't like was the negative reinforcement. So in a whole... I enjoyed the game. I liked it. Again, the theming and everything was so good in this game. The game is quite linear. Many Euro games will have like multiple paths of victory. You could be basically playing three different games with three people, having some interactions with people in worker placement, but go after it three different ways and have, and have people have similar scores. Like in this, the game is very linear. You're working up your three basic traits, you know, your, your, your songs, your, your chops, your, your reputation. You're going to be getting crew, which is going to allow you to uh, you know, get demo tapes to go get uh, income, royalties. You're going to be basically using all of those in those inputs to have enough to go play gigs. So everyone's like building up stats to play gigs to get points is really the main part of it. Sure, you've got the the, the play, the the, the positive, uh, you know, the goals, the, the, the personal goals and the public goals, and that's going to make scoring different as well and give you different ways to score. But from game to game, generally speaking, the game is very linear. Uh, and the game, the randomness was just... It wasn't, it didn't leave you with a good feeling. At least it didn't leave me with a good feeling. So I liked the game. I wanted to like it more than I did. I probably do like it more than I than I feel because of just how how much care was put into the game with the theming and how much everything makes sense. And I loved so much of this game. But for me, it's just not at the point with the randomness bothered me too much. Had too many negative feelings from the game, from the, from the types of randomness that was in the game that pulled it down for me. But if you like worker placement, you like rock and roll, and you like music themes, and you like thematic Euros, you're gonna wanna give this one a shot. If you hate 
event-based randomness and ways to really throw a monkey wrench in your face just because haha -ha, random card came up might not be the one for you. This has been the Game Boy Geek, breaking down barriers, growing racial through board games by helping you find something you love. Game Toppers upgrades every game you play, and they'll be launching their 4.5 Kickstarter this July, which will introduce the new Galactic Minecraft and Watson Game Toppers, as well as new game mats, miniature gaming terrain packs, leg kit options, dining covers, accessories, and amazing package deals. Their summer sale is running right now, and you can get 15% off all accessories and premium game mats at GameToppersLLC.com.